Welcome to the channel. Today we have a slightly different video um, in that I'm going to consider different types of tarot decks and you can have a look at their intrinsic differences, okay? I've got an historical deck. I've got a very heavily themed deck. Actually, I've got two fairly heavily themed decks. And then I have two very illustrative decks. And then I have an ultra minimalist deck here, okay? So what do these decks all have in common? They're all tarot, they're all 78, sometimes 79, sometimes 81 cards. Uh, but essentially they are tarot. Some are right away based. So these uh, will be right away based. This one, to some extent, is also right away based. Uh, that has its own components. Of course, the historical deck is the original and is very interesting because it has... Um, it's very different to read with a historical deck. And then, of course, the soul cards are very different. Again. So the bottom line of all these decks is really how are you going to read with them? How do you read the tarot? Do you learn it by rote? Or do you let images and colors and facial expressions and representations kind of steep into your psyche and then just take it from there? That's how I read. Um, but I, I did, you know, in the beginning, um, 15 years ago, I did try it by rote and it didn't work. Uh, so I would never write <laughs> advice to you uh, to go by rote, but rather uh, choose a deck that speaks to you. And some decks are going to be a lot easier than others to get into. So all the decks that depicts moments that trigger emotions, like I think this deck does that, um, triggering the triggering of emotions. Um, look at the Two of Swords, very so evocative. Some are less evocative for me, but they're kind of a moment in time. They're giving you a moment in time. This deck very much does that, I find. Um, it's telling you a story, a mini story captured. It's almost like a photo, like a, a capture photo. Um, often the pastels are going to be easy and really nice to read with, right? Because even the scary cards are not going to be uber scary. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Look at the hangman, which can be a bit of a double-edged sword. Ha ha ha, very funny. Um, look at, if I can find, the four of swords actually really nice in this one. So the deck generally, even the seven, you're feeling a little bit of the anguish but that this person may be experiencing, but it's not really milked, shall we say. And throughout the deck, even the Three of Swords, which is like your super scary card in the deck, is it's not really that scary. Um, so the pastel decks that capture a moment can be very easy to get into because there's loads to read on them, loads to immerse yourself in, and and they can be very healing. You know, if you're doing this for self-development, it can be very healing because you're diving right in and you're at one with the elements. Um, you know, I'm seeing the water element in these, <laughs> but um, even in the wands, I mean, there's a lot of watery feelings in these particular cards. So, a pastel deck which depicts moments is a really good place to go for starting to read and letting yourself be immersed in, in the cards um, because you're not forced to adhere to somebody's story, so i.e to the book, you can read the book, you know, there's a very comprehensive, very, very good book with it, but you don't have to go there. You can make it yours and read it your way fairly easily because it's so apt at actually 
depicting the, those moments, okay, those tarot cards. You have moments that can be depicted, like in this deck, which are a little bit more esoteric maybe, and also more sledgehammer. No more use of pastel in here. Well, maybe she, she also uses pastels, but this is no longer your beginner, beginner deck because, I mean, you could buy it as a beginner deck. There's nothing that says that you can't buy it as a beginner deck. But look, the, the naming of the card is harder to pick up, okay? So you need to know your cards, whereas here it's kind of spelled out for you all the way through. You've got that border which spells it out for you, whereas here you've got, if it's a major arcana, you've got that little infinity sign. And then for each of the elements, you've got circle, You've got a cloud, you've got a flame, and I can't remember which represents the last one with, yeah, just a wave for water, <laughs> wavy water. And as you can see, the depictions are super beautiful, and here is the Three of Swords again. But I find them um, somehow, somewhat more reflective, okay? Here's the Hangman again, and you don't have that playfulness in this deck. so. It's a lot more introspective, a lot more soul searching. Uh, this is Silla Conway, by the way, the Shimmering Veil Tarot, which I absolutely adore. Um, this is the Wheel of Fortune. So there's the Ten of Swords. In a deck like this, you have less symbology maybe, but you have more introspection to do it. This is also like a snapshot deck, which gives you a moment in time and which is there to bring up particular feelings, okay? Uh, particular reactions from you. This is the Eight of Swords. You know, I'm showing swords because swords can be scary. And for me, a deck that depicts swords really well is a really good deck. <laughs> The Two of Cups, uh, I love strength, the strength. So you need to know your majors as well because they're, they're not titled, okay? And the Kings have a little K, so you, you have little, little clues, okay? So if you want to, if you like the deck, you know, it's possible to, to learn to read it as a beginner, absolutely. I wouldn't, I wouldn't freak out too much um, if you like the art, you know. Essentially, you've got to choose art that, if you're going to read with a Raid Away clone, you have to choose art that speaks to you, whether it's bold art or pastel art or even collage, you know, because Daniel Noel is really, really in collage. If you see the five cups there, and there's a lot of collage, which brings elements together. I don't know, it's really great. But Sheila Conway, she, she just, brings loads of elements together and she paints them. She paints them, I think it's oils, and then she she turns them into cards. Uh, she has them turned into cards. There is the, the first card, the full. And so this deck, in comparison, if you choose something which is more graphic and maybe a little bit darker and the colors are a little bit starker, this is going to be more punchy. You know, the, the messages are going to be maybe more punchy or they're going to bring up more introspection. Um, this is lovely to get into reading and lovely when you're working with clients because it doesn't punch them in the face. But um, this is one of my decks of choice when I need to get things moving. It's less healing. There's less of the healing aspect. So if you like the healing aspect, I'd like to have the elements truly represented so that I can immerse myself in the cards and I can really get into the healing aspect of, of that beautiful picture that I'm, I'm contemplating. So, you also have decks which are going to be more like pip decks, right? So we're getting more into the pips now. Uh, so these will not make it easy for you. 
And what do you have to rely on on here? I mean, this is still easy to read because it gives you lots of clues. You know, look at how the cups are made. Look at the the lines. Look at the gradients. Look at the moon. So you know, you you still have a lot of the hermit. Uh, you still have a lot of clues. She's made um, the major arcana easy to read because they have the um, titles and they have their numbers, but the other cards do not. But they have the element, you know, depicted really easy to, to pick up, okay? So then it's really about, do you like a themed deck? Because this is a themed deck. This is wild unknown. So it's you know it's going to have a lot of nature, a lot of animals in it. Um, and there's not going to be people in there. There's no people. There's no one. <laughs> okay. So you've got to be able to really get in with reading those lines, reading the putting the sparse colors. I mean, I'm going to show you the Nine of Swords, which is a pretty scary Nine of Swords. It's one of my least favorites because it doesn't really give you anywhere to go <laughs> when this, okay? In a lot of other decks, you have things, you know, clues that are hidden in the Nine of um, of Swords, whereas here there's, there's really nothing. So when you work with a deck like that and you pick your Nine of Swords, you've got to remember that this is not, you know, this is not all that there is. And maybe there is that rain falling and taking all of that, waiting to take all of that away. So you've got to read absolutely all the clues that you've got on offer. Um, yeah, I do like this deck. I do find it a little bit like in your face kind of thing. Uh, there are cards that speak to me loads, um, like the, the wheel. The wheel does speak to me enormously um, you have to read the lines what she has chosen to express through the lines in this deck because you know it makes for well a more complete reading really so there's the devil so rather than having a photo or a snapshot of a moment you have a depiction which is there to just bring you to a character or hmm, I guess a moment but it's not a picture kind of moment it's more I, I just find it more brutal okay a little bit more brutal some of them depict almost more like you know the uh, the moon in the forest but by and large, it's not about depicting a scene, is what I'm saying, okay? If you see here, this is not about depicting a scene. So you've got to wonder, how are you going to interact with this? It's, it's harder to interact with decks like this for a lot of people. Um, with Kim Kranz, I pay major attention to the amount of color that she has in the card, the amount of black, the amount of white, and and the lines, the lines, the lines, the lines, as well as, of course, the, the prime subject matter. So, you know, you have a rainbow here, you have um, a butterfly there. So the, these are all really major elements, of course. <laughs> and they, they kind of jump out of the card at you. But it's, you know, very different. Okay, can you immerse yourself in this one as well as you can in this one? I don't know. You're gonna to have to make to make that call, but be be prepared when you're uh, experimenting with reading tarot. Be prepared to have moments where you're stuck and you just don't know how this relates to family and you know that happiness of having established your line until you realize that these are seeds, <laughs> and then it becomes really easy. <laughs> That's just an example. Okay, the fourth deck is also a themed deck. This is uh, the Cleopatra Tarot. And if you can read, this is something that I'm reading. Uh, it's worth separating in a, in a theme deck like this. It's worth separating the major and the minor arcana because the minors are not gonna speak to you very much unless you are very, 
up on your gods of Egypt and your astrology. This is essentially what it's about. Um, because it's all, all the depictions are taken from the Dendera Zodiac uh, at the Dendera Temple. And what well, actually is held in Paris. But <laughs> um, So, you know, does this speak to you? This is the Ace of Cups. What does it say to you? Do you find it easy to immerse yourself or not? You know, what are you reading? What are the parts of these cards? that you are able to read and then does it actually make sense in terms of how you would read so this one as temperance makes complete sense which is why i think it's worth reading with just the majors with this one um but and this one also you know for the the star that that works that works as well i'm just trying to find ten of cups okay so ten of cups is that evocative for you? There's little depictions. So when you invest, and I know they're not very expensive, but when you invest in decks like these, how are you going to go about it? You know, how are you going to go about finding out what all the bits actually mean? The wheel. Because this is very niche. So is it, are you going to want it for, for the art and then you're just reading it as you as you otherwise would? The, there is a very small booklet. It would really lend itself to having a much bigger booklet. So when you have more obscure decks like this, they probably lend themselves to having a more complete booklet. You know, I would really love a more comprehensive booklet than just this. Uh, and I mean, there's only like a few pages, you know, because it's uh, in multiple languages. If you have something like this, it's really worth having. Does it come with a comprehensive reading uh, with a book that enables you to dig into the, the deck? The book is not badly done. It's actually quite well done. I just wish it was a little bit more complete. And staying on pip decks, the next one is the Le Véritable, the real Tower de Marseille. Okay, so I have several editions. I just happen to really like this one, which has really nice colors. I find the CBD colors um, are a little bit washed out and the expressions are also washed out. This is the happy medium between the bold Grimaud um, which has very few colors and really like mm, frowny <laughs> expressions and the, um, the bend of which has all happy expressions and really washed out colors. So if you're looking for a Tower de Marseille, this one is really good. Of course, traditionally in the Tower de Marseille, all your cards are labeled in French and here this holds true. They are all in French. Uh, I just adore tower in the it's just so good and and you will find that the meanings of of the cards in the historical decks are very different so the tower de marseille you know is worth having a peek at because for example the tower is for you to realize that someone is making you walk upside down so who is dragging you making you do things who's got you wrapped around their little finger basically Who's wasting your energy? This is what this is standing for. It's not about like an event. You know, I mean, it might be the event as well. <laughs> you know, it's like, wake up. <laughs> this is not working. You're crazy. <laughs> okay. Um, I do like the historical figures in this. I think this one still gives you plenty uh, to go on with. Um, it's a very happy medium. I mean, look at that that king very good you know i mean you you do get so much to read you have the colors the expressions um even the environment you know you get some of the environment there and then even though it's pip deck you still have a fair amount to read in here and i know it doesn't look like you have but you do have a fair amount to read are the flowers open closed what color are they are they turning up are they turning down you know, there's 
I could do a whole load, a whole video on that, or a whole load of videos. L'Etoile. So they still depict a scene. Radio Wade Smith deck inspired itself from this uh, this Marseille tarot, and I'm gonna show you the stuffs, and and it kind of changed it. It made it more depictions. So it took these, the majors, and it applied that to all the minors. And the way that the Rader Waite Smith is read is not traditional in the way that they made up a lot of it. Okay, they just made up a lot of it. And so you're gonna have to make an educated decision as to how you want to read. And also to know that it's not bad to make it up your way. Okay, because they, it's been done before. That's kind of the process of tarot. Observe how the cards are coming out for you and what, you know, what they're expressing. You know, do a journal, do, you know, like daily journals for years and then you will know what the cards represent for you. So I really like the Marseille. I find it very evocative. There's loads to read. There's colors, there's orientation. So. In a way, not a million miles away from this, okay? But I still find that there is actually more to read in the Marseille than there is in Kim, Kim Kranz in The Wild Unknown. Very, very personal thing. Um, so if you look at justice, don't just stop at the first thing that you see. What else do you see behind it? And you will notice many things. <laughs> so uh, I could talk about the justice card until tomorrow, so I better move on though. Um, very interesting to work with those Pip decks, those Pip Marseille decks. Very, very interesting because you're sort of familiar with them, but they don't take it all the way to full depictions uh, like this. Okay, they, they're more subdued, I guess. And then finally, to a totally minimalist tarot, how do you read super minimalist tarot? And these are the sort of cards that you just have to let enter <laughs> your, um, they're called soul cards, so I'm gonna say enter your soul, and you know, tune into your soul. Um, some of them will be obvious, so it's a pip deck, but it's like it's it's taken the pip into the majors because this is death and this is the devil, and you really are getting this pipish idea. But look, there's also loads to read. You know, there's the snakes coming up. There's the upside down pent pentagram up there. Um, there's the upside down eyes, so this person is upside down. Why are they upside down? How is this affecting them? The swords, the scary swords, are not so scary, right? Because there's no color. This is monochrome. So it, it becomes a little bit difficult. I mean, you can see the drops dripping from off of the swords. And that gives you clues. But it's, let's say, less is more, as in you really have to sit with it and you have to go and figure it. Um, this is very much how the uh, Nine of Pentacles is uh, represented in the, um, in the historical decks, except that this one is monochrome. So you've only got your gold and your white, or if you get it in black, your gold and your black. Um, they come in four different backgrounds. So, the way that I sit with these is very much I sit with them and then I observe them and I observe the play between them, if there is a progression between them. Um, I can't really do like a picture postcard with them, but I love them for their simplicity and then generally I find that if there is clarifications for me to be had, if I work with an oracle deck or two, the clarifications are just so obvious and I will do some sample readings 
with the oracle cards in with this deck at some point um, because it's it's a really worthwhile way to read you know it gives you such a complete picture and you can see that they're giving you loads <laughs> they're not just leaving you hanging but very very simple so you really have to forget the blah 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 they also don't come with a book. There is a book available online, but they don't come with a book in the box. So it really is about immersing yourself and seeing, well, what is the progression, you know? So um, today for me, the progression was from being very much in my head, um, very much needing a rest. And then it was progressing to the fire element okay so it goes from the air element into the fire element and that was just really obvious just reading the cards and the fire element was the overwhelming element because that was a major so then it's also about gradation of you know a minor is not as important or will not have as much of an impact say a, a, a three of swords will not have as much as a, of an impact as a as the sun for example as a major so these are the kind of things that you need to organize in your head when you're reading with super minimalist deck. So that being said, I love all these decks. I love pondering on them. I love just soul searching with them. And I love just having a, a moment of introspection with them. And depending on how you feel, it's worth having two or three very different decks just to kind of make you react in very different ways. So I'm gonna stop it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like and subscribe, that always helps. And I will see you soon.